Today, we're gonna be making this circular patio pad. And it's dry pour. That's right, I'm doubling down. But just wait until you see what we put on top of this at the end of the video. Let's make something cool. So, like I said, we're gonna be doing another dry pour, but I wanted this dry pour to be different. I wanted to do something with a design that you have not been seeing in other dry pour videos. So, we're gonna go with a 16 foot diameter circular patio. Within that circle, we're gonna have individual square slabs. They're gonna have three inch grout lines and we're gonna fill those grout lines in with some gravel for some visual interest. Now, to take this project just one step further, we are gonna build a gazebo on top of it. To take it another step further, I only have seven days to do this. Got a party scheduled and I wanna make sure that everything is as welcoming as possible. So since I don't have very much time to do this, I need to get started on this project right now. Like yesterday right now. Now I just gotta excavate this area, make it level and flat. And before I forget, there will be a link down in the description below for the plans and dimensions for this particular patio. All right, so rolling up the sod has proven to be way, way harder than I could have ever imagined. Also, it's very hot. It, we're talking like it's in the 90 degrees right now. So I'm gonna go put some shorts on since I don't want you to see my pasty white legs, I'm not gonna film the rest of this, but uh, I'm just gonna chisel away at this until it's done. But don't be stupid like me. Get yourself a couple of buddies, rent a sod cutter, and just get it done. I am very cheap and stubborn, so this is the way I'm going to do it. <laughs> I, I finished pulling up the sod. <laughs> I did it. Uh, yeah! Didn't kill me like I thought you were going to, did ya? <laughs> no, sir. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go inside and throw up or cry, possibly both. Now that we've got the sod all cleared away, now it's time to work on building the frame. Now there are probably a hundred different ways to build. A frame like this. So what I ended up going with is building a, a main spine, if you will, going across the length. I then built some ribs going off the sides. Then I'm just going to fill the rest in with the smaller boards. But a, a couple of things that I thought were important with this particular frame. One, you've got to make sure that you screw these together in a way that after the concrete is cured, you can take them out. So I ended up toenailing all of my connecting screws from the top. Don't get yourself into a situation where you've hidden all the rest of the connecting screws with the concrete. Another thing that I found helpful was since the spacing is three inches, I just I made several planks by ganging two boards together and screwing them together with two and a half inch screws. After that, I would just cut them to length. As far as the main spine was concerned, there's no way I was going to find a 16 foot board that was going to be straight enough for this frame. So I ended up butting two eight footers together and then scabbing them with another eight footer, then adding one four footer on each end. Straightest 16 footer I have ever seen. Now for the fun part. We're going to mark out the exact circumference of this patio. Since it's a circle, we're going to drive a nail in the center of the frame, we're going to tie a string around the nail, and then we're going to measure out the radius of the patio, which in this case, it's a little under eight feet. Then we're going to tie a marker on the other end and just mark it out. Now we're just gonna cut to those lines that we just made with a circular saw, but since I'm not going to be able to cut all the way down, I'm gonna finish up the cut with a reciprocating saw.
All right, now for another fun part of the build. I'm gonna take these eighth inch thick melamine strips. You don't have to use melamine strips. This is just what I had on hand that was flexible. You could just use regular hardboard. But I've ripped them at three and a half inches, the same thickness as the two by fours, and they are eight feet long. We are going to bend these around the frame in sections, uh, but at the same time try to make a nice cohesive circle. The, the ribs are going to help me kind of stay on shape, but I still have to check in between the ribs to make sure that I've got the right bow, if that makes sense. All right, it's the next day and we are ready to pour. Well, dry pour that is. Now, I'm not going to bother doing a gravel base this time. I feel like a lot of the success for a dry pour comes from getting moisture out from underneath, and I think that's gonna be better done by just going straight over the soil. But I am going to start by focusing on the four inner squares first. That way I can still reach them and finish them. Then I'll move on to pouring and finishing the outer sections. So, let's saturate that ground really well and get to pouring. Well, as you can see, I've only filled these cavities up about halfway because a lot of you suggested that I really need to do some metal reinforcement, and you're right. So this time, we're gonna do some metal reinforcement. Another very popular suggestion that you guys had was why not saturate the concrete after you filled it halfway up? And I think that's a great idea. I, it certainly can't hurt. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm just screeding it with a two by four. And if I run into any of these low spots or voids, fill it in with a little extra concrete. Go over it again. Now for what I feel is the most satisfying part of a dry pour, doing the edging. Now, after I finish the edging, I think I'm going to do the um, initial misting over these four center squares. I'm just, I'm scared I'm gonna screw these middle squares up while I do the, the outer perimeter. Well, now I've got this initial misting going. Now I'm going to continue to carefully work around the perimeter.
Well, that's all I could get done for tonight. I'm gonna have to call it a night, get some rest, and also I have to go to Home Depot and get 19 more bags because um, ran out of concrete. 50 bags and I still ran out of concrete. All right, this is the next day. I'm going to pour the last four sections. Got all my bags set and ready to go. But I am not going to pour half, then saturate. Because I noticed in some spots the moisture was actually wicking up to the surface before I had a chance to trowel and screed it. And that was making it very difficult for me to finish and giving me some really rough finish spots and some discoloration. So I'm just gonna pour half, put the metal reinforcement in, pour the second half, screed, do the edging, mist it, and so on. All right, all done. So I've gotta let this cure for at least three days before I even touch these forms and then start putting rocks in between the spaces. The party is in four days, so that means that I've gotta get the gazebo up the day before or the day of, which I really don't wanna do but we'll see. But again, the soaking sequence. You missed it real good. One hour after that, you soak it. You soak it three times with one hour in between. Hell, even do four. But do yourself a favor and do not touch those forms for at least three days. All right, well this has had a three day cure on it. So it's time to pop these forms off. Just let's see how easy or how hard it is to pop these forms off. The, uh, the forms came off easy enough, but I I'm not going to lie, I did need to use a, kind of a, a little bit of a fulcrum and a leverage action. So now it's time to fill these gaps up with some river pebbles to give it some visual interest. I'm sure you've noticed that I didn't put any kind of weed barrier. I'm not gonna bother because weeds are just gonna get past anything you put down anyway, so. Why bother? Well, got all the gravel done. Unfortunately, it is too late to start on the gazebo, so I'm gonna have to start on the gazebo tomorrow, which is the day of the party. <laughs> so, uh, should be able to do it. So I'm gonna start bright and early tomorrow so that I can get it done in time for the party, which is at 6 p.m. But what do you think? Not bad, huh? It is bright and early. It is party day today. The party's not until 6 p.m., so that gives me about nine hours to complete this gazebo. I should be able to do it, as long as it goes smoothly. But as you watch this awesome time lapse, I wanted to talk a little bit about the product and the company that sent me this gazebo in the first place. So a company called Dami Outdoor Living reached out to me, they wanted to send me this 10 by 12 gazebo and see what I thought. Dami Outdoor Living is a company that carries a host of pergolas, gazebos, and outdoor furniture and things of that nature. But this gazebo came to me in five well-packaged boxes so there were no damaged or bent parts. But as soon as I got everything unpackaged and laid out, the, the very first thing that I noticed was the quality of the parts. The aluminum was a thick gauge and the paint seemed very durable and the wood look looked very natural. The other thing that I noticed is that this particular gazebo has this built-in gutter system, which I thought was really cool. And when you're standing from the ground, you don't even notice it's there. But building this thing was very easy and the reason why is these instructions were very easy to follow. Not only were the parts labeled in the instructions, but they were also very clearly labeled on the parts themselves. And as somebody that has been putting a lot of things together lately, having instructions that are easy to follow are priceless. All the other companies out there, how hard is it to label both the instructions and the parts? But the only gripe I have about this system is that it, I really wish that it came with some 
trim pieces to hide the mounting brackets on the bottom of the posts. I I'm sure I can make something up real quick, but uh, I, I really wish that that's something that it would have came with. Other than that, it seems very strong and durable. It looks fantastic, and my family and I, we absolutely love it. So thank you very much to Dami Outdoor Living for sending this gazebo. Link down below if you guys are interested in this particular model. All right, it's 12.42, just had some lunch. Uh, got most of the roof frame up. It's going really well. I think we're in good shape. After I finish up some details on the roof frame, just gotta put the panels up, hang the curtains, and I think we're good. I'm thinking I should be done by three, but we'll see. It is 5.13 p.m. and I'm all done. We're gonna get things cleaned up, get some furniture out here, because guests will be arriving soon. Well, we absolutely love our new relaxing spot that we can enjoy outside, rain or shine. But you know what this gazebo really needs? A brand new fire table. But you'll have to wait until the next video to see that.